To outsiders, the choice of Dr. Pellman was unusual. He was not an expert in neurology and had no background in brain research. He went to a school in Guadalajara. Dr. Pellman is not a neurosurgeon. He's not a uh, neuro anything. He's a rheumatologist. In 1994, NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue said he was skeptical about the risk from concussions, once calling the controversy the result of packed journalism. Concussions, I think, is a, you know, one of these packed journalism issues, frankly. There's no increase in concussions. The number is relatively small. The problem is it's a journalist issue. It's this not. is the commissioner of the NFL saying that there's no concussion issue. If it was ignorance, they should have known. They should have known because the issue is so critical. That continues to be Still, Tagliabue created a scientific committee, the Mild Traumatic Brain Injury Committee, the MTBI. To lead it, he chose Elliot Pellman, the New York Jets team doctor a firm believer that concussions were not a serious problem. And so you had this behind the scenes, this, you know, this dynamic going on, where you had a guy, Elliot Pellman, who very clearly believed that this wasn't a problem. It just wasn't a big problem for the NFL. To outsiders, the choice of Dr. Pellman was unusual. He was not an expert in neurology and had no background in brain research. He went to a school in Guadalajara. Dr. Pellman is not a neurosurgeon. He's not a uh, neuro anything. He's a rheumatologist. You know, putting a rheumatologist in the head of a, a committee that arguably was going to have more influence over brain research, you know, than any other, any particular institution in the country at the time, um, you know, was, was, I think, a lot of people felt surprising. Most of Pellman's committee was made up of NFL loyalists. Nearly half the members were team doctors. If you're going to put together a blue ribbon committee to study brain trauma, it should have as its chair somebody who has that as a background, either a neurologist, neurosurgeon, neuropathologist, preferably a clinician. For years, Pellman's committee would insist they were studying the problem, that the danger from concussions was overblown. The way the NFL handled this was for 15 years to do research that looks awfully like it was designed to say that the league was okay in doing what it was doing, which wasn't much, to protect players from the dangers of concussions. Pellman's committee began writing a series of scientific papers, and in 2003, got the first of them published in the medical journal Neurosurgery. Those initial studies from the NFL were notorious in telling the world over and over and over again, no, there's no relationship between hitting your head in football and later life problems. No, there's no relationship. The papers downplayed the risk of concussions, are not serious injuries. insisted that players could return to the same game after suffering a concussion, return to play does not involve a significant risk of a second injury, denied players suffered any long-term problems from concussions sustained while playing football. There was no evidence of worsening injury or chronic cumulative effects of multiple MTBIs. In and in one of the papers even suggested their research might apply to younger athletes despite the fact that they had not studied high school or college players. It might be safe for college, high school football players to be cleared to return to play on the same day as their injury. They were making comments which were greatly at odds with prospective double-blinded studies done at the college and the high school level that just weren't finding the same things. And that just didn't make sense to anyone that's a scientist. Multiple concussions. Dr. Robert Cantu edited the journal's sports medicine section. The papers were published despite his objections. The papers that started to make statements about uh, multiple head injuries were not a problem in the NFL. If they went back into the same contest with a concussion, it didn't matter. 
if they got knocked out and went back into the same contest, it didn't matter. Um, and there were no long-term bio, uh, long-term um, psychological problems or cognitive problems in these athletes. In essence, saying it was, wasn't a problem. Dr. Cantu says he took his concerns to the journal's editor-in-chief, Dr. Michael Apuzo. Apuzo was also a consultant for the New York Giants. I said that I really think this data is flawed. I really think it shouldn't be published. He's the one that made the decision to publish papers, no matter whether the reviewers felt they should be published or not, no matter whether the section editor felt they should be published or not. Mark Lovell was a member of the committee and an author on some of the studies. He now admits there were problems with the research. I look back on some of the papers, yeah, I think I could have done it differently. I think the fault of the paper was mm -hmm. it was maybe too early to be making those statements um, uh, based on a fairly small sample of players, which is the major criticism uh, of the study, right. which I think is a valid one. The NFL committee published 16 papers. Neither Dr. Apuzo Dr. Pellman, nor Commissioner Tagliabue, would speak to Frontline about the papers. But in those articles, the League had issued its definitive denials. The closer you look, the less this holds up, but it did establish, uh, you know, this kind of impressive looking set of findings, uh, which, which pushed off the day of reckoning for the League. That's really what is happening here, right? During this whole run of research that's being published, the day of reckoning, where the league has to answer to somebody about what it's doing about concussions, just keeps getting pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. And the NFL doctor at some point said to me, Bennett, do you know the implications of what you're doing? 